All right, moving on, section 7.1, part two. Whoa, different types of microscopes produce a variety of images of cell parts. Check it out. Here's a scanning probe microscope, and uh, it scans a tiny probe just above the surface of a sample and produces an image by recording the position of the probe. These powerful instruments can even visualize DNA molecules, all right? Confocal light microscopy, I'll let you read that. And scanning electron microscopes, I'll let you read this. Oh man, this sounds like a good basis for a quiz question. I think you should know what different types of images these produce. And maybe some of their limitations. Good for notes. <coughs> Let's move on. Uh, in the 1990s, oh, hold on. In the 1990s, researchers perfected a new class of microscopes that produced images by tracing the surface of samples with a fine probe. These scanning probe microscopes have revolutionized the study of the surface and made it possible to observe single atoms. Unlike electron microscopes, scanning probe microscopes can operate in ordinary air and can even show samples in solution. Researchers have already used scanning probe microscopes to image DNA and protein molecules, as well as a number of important biological structures. Wow! They have microscopes that can look at DNA, at the atom. Whew, very cool. Prokaryotes and eukaryotes. Here's one of our objectives. Uh, Remember, it asks you to know the characteristics of prokaryotes and eukaryotes. Cells so come in a great variety of shapes and amazing range of sizes. Although a typical cell ranges from 5 to 50 micrometers. What is a micrometer? That is uh, a millionth. 5 to 50 millionths of a meter in diameter. The tiniest mycoplasma bacteria are only 0.2 micrometers across. Um, so small that they are different to see they are difficult to see even in the best light microscopes. In contrast, the giant amoeba, ma amoeba chaos, chaos, <laughs> may be a thousand micrometers in diameter, large enough to be seen with the unaided eye as a tiny speck in pond water. Despite their differences, all cells have two characteristics in common. They are surrounded, important, surrounded by a barrier called a cell membrane and at some point in their lives, they contain the molecule that carries biological information, DNA. Mm, what do all cells have in common? Great quiz question. Did you catch that, by the way? Think of it. The cells, bacteria, come in such a range, amazing range of size. 0.2 micrometers. That's the smallest. And the biggest is about 1,000 micrometers. That's a 2,000 times difference. Wow. Totally wild. Hmm. Anyway. Uh, let's keep on moving. Rock on with me to page 173. Cells fall into two broad categories, depending, where am I reading? Depending on whether they contain a nucleus. The nucleus, plural nuclei, is a large membrane enclosed structure that contains the cell's genetic material in the form of DNA. A membrane is a thin layer of material that serves as a covering lining. Pause. Students, are you reading with me? Are you following with your eyes, either on the screen or with your book? If you're not, you're cheating yourself. You need to use your brain, and part of using your brain is using your eyes to look at words. Are you taking notes? Are you writing the important things down? Are you pausing the video as we go to take notes? If you're not, you're cheating yourself. You're just sitting here and hoping it's going to soak into your brain. That's not going to work. You've got to study. You've got to study and fight for it. Write this stuff down. Make sure you know your objectives. Are you taking notes? Nice. Moving right along. The nucleus, plural, nuclei, is a large membrane-enclosed structure that contains the cell's genetic material in the form of DNA. A membrane is a thin layer of material that serves as a covering or lining. The nucleus controls many of the cell's activities. Eukaryotes, vocab word, are cells that contain nuclei. Prokaryotes, pro vocab word, are cells that do not contain nuclei. Both words are derived from the Greek words karyon, meaning kernel, or nucleus, and eu, meaning true, and pro, meaning before. These words reflect the idea that prokaryote cells evolved before 
nuclei developed. Ma, once again, that is one person's point of view. Prokaryotes. Prokaryotic cells are generally smaller and simpler than eukaryotic cells, although there are many exceptions to this ru rule. Prokaryotic cells have genetic material that is not contained in the nucleus. Oh, great vocab question material. So, class, what kind of cell contains material in the nucleus? Ooh, ooh, Mr. Worley, a eukaryotic cell does. Oh, good student. No. Anyway, some prokaryotes contain internal membranes, but prokaryotes are generally less complicated than eukaryotes. Despite their simplicity, prokaryotes carry out every activity associated with living things. They grow, reproduce, respond to in the environment, and some can even move by gliding along the surface or swimming through lipid liquids. The organisms we call bacteria are prokaryotes. Ooh, that's good to know. Eukaryotes. Are you writing down the things I underline? Are you somehow trying to make a marker for your studies for later? Eukaryotes. Eukaryotic cells are generally larger and more complex than prokaryotic cells. As you can see in figure 7-4, look at it. Eukaryotic cells generally contain dozens of structures and internal membranes, and many are highly specialized. Eukaryotic cells contain a nucleus in which their genetic material is separated from the rest of the cell. Eukaryotic, eukaryotes display a great variety. Some eukaryotes live solitary lives as single-celled organisms. Others form large multicellular organisms. Plants, animals, fungi, and protists are eukaryotes. All right. Well, that, that, that wraps up our section for 7-1. Remember, your assignment is 7-1 section assessment or thinking visually. Now, if you do thinking visually, I want you to make sure that your chart is nice, that you use a ruler for straight lines, and I want you to have lots of information in there. All right, class, be ready to rock out that quiz tomorrow. This is Mr. Worley saying, God loves you, and so do I. Take it easy. Peace out. Bye-bye.